You've tuned into the Bellingham Podcast for the week of August 26, 2018. This is episode 91. From that smoky city by the Salish Sea, I am AJ Barce. And coughing up a lung to clear my air passages out. I am Chris Powell. On this episode, AJ and I take a deeper dive into the PNW State of Mind series. Last episode, we discussed what we munch on. This time, we're focusing on something more cerebral. It's a journey to the center of the mind. Mindfulness, meditation, sleep, stuff like that. Won't you join us on this 30-minute journey? This is the Bellingham Podcast. I love the Jules Verne reference. How you doing, Chris? Not bad. Actually, I'm great, AJ. Uh, and yourself? Uh, not bad. Just... Uh... <clears throat> trying to <clears throat> clear the passageways, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yes, I do. It's a, a blessed thing, but let, let's go back here uh, about 20 seconds. Yeah. Jules, that was a Jules Verne reference? A journey to the center of the mind, a journey to the center of the earth was right. Jules Verne. Well, actually, back in the earlier days, uh, Ted Nugent had a song called Journey to the Center of the Mind. I'm pretty sure Jules Verne predates him by like 100 years, but that's uh, anyway, cool. <laughs> That's <laughs> we, where the hook came from. <laughs> we shall nerd later. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, let's get this rolling. So last episode, we dealt with uh, our first of our, our, I think this is going to be five parts. We're still working on it, a uh, series of the Pacific Northwest State of Mind. And we hit on a lot of just nutrition and yes. specifically food and habits. And you're going to see this trend continue into this week. But as Chris said, we're going to look at our mental nutrition. Um, this is something I think that we severely lack everywhere, whether it's in the Pacific Northwest or just our work life tends to throw a monkey wrench in our little gray cells. And we have so many other distractions. There are so many monkeys flying around. Speaking of monkey wrench, uh, so many monkeys flying around distracting us. We, we got to get a little bit more disciplined in how we're approaching taking care of ourselves. And so we're going up a few inches from the mouth part. Let's go to the brain, <laughs> uh, the cerebral cortex, cerebellum, uh, medulla oblongata, uh, amygdala, and all those other parts known as you're our using, brain. You're using two bigger words for me, Chris. I just had some caffeine. So <laughs> there you go. Here we go. Okay. So uh, I want to I want to dovetail back into our, our last episode because I'd mentioned something in 90, but I never came back to it because we ran out of time. Let's go back to the 90. So on 90, I mentioned something about the Zero app. And uh, Zero is an app uh, in part created by Kevin Rose, who uh, does a lot of biohacking and specifically in health and looking at alternative trends around um, nutrition. And there is a lot of research around intermittent fasting, um, whether you want to call it a diet or a lifestyle. Again, uh, Chris and I are not uh, medical practitioners, nor do we play one on podcast. And anything that we say, the views expressed here should not usurp that of a actual physician. So please consult your medical practitioner before you try anything. Now, with that obligatory statement said, Zero is an app that allows you to track either a 13-hour or 16-hour fast. Um, in the app, um, matter of fact, they have an obligatory disclosure that they have to say before you can start using the app because you are going 13 or 16 hours without eating. That's a that's a chore for some people. It is. but uh, And there is some science. Um, some believe pseudoscience. Some others believe that it is science regarding how intermittent fasting can be good for holistic care of your body. Um, it spurs a lot of different cells that do good things like uh, stem cells in us and all this other jazz. I don't know a lot about the science behind it. It helps you start digesting what your reserves got because it Body needs to burn energy. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the the diets that we mentioned on the last episode, some like the paleo and the keto and all that other jazz. Like part of that uh, methodology may uh, require you to fast, and what this does is track the last time that you ate uh, from sunrise to sunset. The thirteen hours fast, I believe, is called the circadian uh, method, going with the circadian uh, uh, rhythm of rhythm. our bodies. Yep. Um, and the reason why I brought it up last episode with nutrition, uh, body nutrition is not that I was using it as an intermittent fasting, but much like what you said, trying to figure out, uh, what's the, when's the last time that I ate. Mm -hmm. So I used it for that type of tracking. So when I had dinner, let's say it was a late night because it's been a busy week. You know, I had dinner at six 30. The last thing that I ate was at seven o'clock. And so I would start the app so that the next day when I have breakfast or lunch, I can see how long I've elapsed. So I wasn't using it for intermittent fasting, but trying to find that discipline of like, I don't get midnight munchies, not you know, a, not a bad idea. Yeah. So that, that's the reason why I had mentioned it. Zero uh, link in the show notes. 
drink. Drink. Um, it, you'll you'll be able to check it out. I believe it is iOS and Android now. So cool. Good on Kevin Rose for making it available to our Android brethren out there. Yep. What's up, Kevin? So uh, along those same veins, I also did a little bit of biohacking experiment on myself. What'd you try this week? So I tried, the, and the, the, this has an interesting history. I tried Soylent. Go on. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with Soylent, Soylent, yes, is an excellent uh, dystopian Charlton Heston film, uh, Soylent Green. Mm-hmm. This is actually a drink that comes out of, I shouldn't say drink, it is a meal substitute that comes out of the geek culture. Uh, I believe it was on Kickstarter or it had some some origin in um, self-funding. Props for its minimalist packaging. Uh, originally. Now originally. it's got, now it's got more. Oh, they went more modern and, and, and eye catching. Oh, I'll get to that. But yes. anyway, so what Soylent is, there was a, a guy who figured out what is the, uh, essential vitamins and micronutrients, minerals, uh, that we need in a, I think each bottle is 500 calorie, uh, dose for lack of a better term. And it was interesting because, and it got marketed and, you know, got put out there. And it was interesting because the the flavor of it, well, it doesn't taste bad. Okay. Okay. If you're if you're if you've ever done any like um, for, if if you've done any type of workout and you you know you have those workout shakes. Yes. It's comparable to those. It's not like oh my oh my god you know horrible or mm-hmm. oh my god this is fantastic. It's it tastes like basically if you take milk you pour it into your Lucky Charms in the morning you pick out all of the marshmallows and let the the other cereal kind of goop and Ugh. then you strain it out. That's basically what it tastes oh, like. Oh, you're killing me, Smalls. But it's it's not bad. <laughs> But it doesn't taste good. But it doesn't taste great. Oh, oh okay. Yes. We, we, we need to... Some opinions vary <laughs> as far as its taste content. But the, the methodology of it is is that you, you take Soylent as a meal replacement once a day and to help with weight loss, weight regulation. And you do not, as opposed to some other um, meal replacement drinks, etc., uh, this one is d- engineered, I guess, for lack of better terms, f- to supplement you with all of the nutrients required for a meal. Now, out of it, I wasn't doing this out of, I, I, I want to lose weight. I want to get swole, Chris. Mm-hmm. That's not what I was doing. Um, we had it. Uh, it was given to us. Cool. Um, not by Soylent, just actually by uh, family. And I was like, okay, I'll try it. You know, see, let's see what's going on. And um, I replaced it as a dinner. And it is. It, it'll. It'll. It sits in your stomach. It's. It's about the consistency of pancake batter. Oh. <laughs> um, uh. So it's a little bit thicker than your average, uh, perhaps like a soy, a soy whey based mm-hmm. um, uh, workout or pre workout drink. And it did fill me. However, out of it, it's not for me. Uh, and here's why: we were much like the Charlton, he- Charlton Heston film. We were not made on this planet to consume things engineered i think there is even though if you're if you're making better strides to eat healthier at least you're eating something that actually once was alive and whether you're you're vegan or vegetarian or carnivorous it, it, at least it's biological and organic yeah uh i don't know like there is i i just it, it it was an interesting experience, Chris. I came out of it thinking, you know, I do not want to be like in the, a lot of those dystopian films. I don't want to see our society. Everything comes out of a test tube. And as as human beings on this blue orb that we call Earth, I don't think that's I hope that's not our future. I hope that we uh, well, it's a great experiment. Yeah. Good on you for going first uh, for this. If you want to check out Soylent, it's in a number of uh, stores it around. It is now, and that, that was the, the hook into this show, yeah. is uh, earlier this month, it was announced that Walmart now will be uh, carrying this Soylent, and it's got better packaging. It's not just a white label. It Fair actually enough. says Soylent, and so, it comes in flavors now, uh, uh, <laughs> as opposed to just Lucky I'm not Charms gonna, Pancake. I'm, I'm not going to try to fill in a, a punchline about the flavors for that. But anyway, um, yeah, should you be interested in uh, on-the-go uh, hectic lifestyle, Soylent might be something for you to consider as you're working on rejiggering your uh, diet intake. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend it. Fair enough. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's talk. To, let's turn to the brain. Let's look at the brain. So, Chris, you have an interesting take on this because you're looking at the brain not from the nine to five, but more from the the uh, nine p.m. to five a.m. approach. What's what's going on? Well, I'm I'm trying to. 
I'm seeing so many instances where when we don't have a good night's sleep, we're not on our game. I mean, sing along if you know the words. I'm trying to figure out, and I got to a point where I would be waking up one or two times a night um, and restless uh, sleep, irritable during the day, uh, and not not able to focus in, in, in my field of work. I need to have some really pretty deep focus stuff. So was reading a book, looking at a lot of articles. Uh, there's a sleep movement by a very popular uh, author uh, for some kind of news, uh, I guess, news agency, whatever. But uh, there's a great book out there called How We Sleep. It's by Matthew Welk- Walker. And uh, it's, you know, Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams. And it was, I was reading it on an airplane flight, which of course, I wanted to sleep, but I stayed awake. Leveraging our internal circadian rhythm, going back to that app that you talked about with Zero, the circadian rhythm is just our body's daily routine. Wake up, we're in a, you know, if you're an early morning person, you're at your optimum peak in the morning and you tail off as the day progresses. If you're a night owl, you start off in a low point and ramp up. Leveraging the internal rhythm that we have in our bodies, each individual uh, rhythm that we have, there are ways to be able to get better sleep, whether you go to sleep at 10 p.m. or you go to sleep at 3 a.m. Unfortunately, some of the main ways to get that kind of good sleep, according to this book, will probably make people groan. Okay, what are they? So here's where all of our listeners go, "Eh, I'm out and drop out. But anyway, (laughs) I'm going to say it anyway. Um, To help with getting better sleep, having no bright light or screens to look at as you approach your uh, routine bedtime will help you get a better night's sleep because back centuries up until the 1900s, uh, uh, the society went with the sunrise and went with the sunset. Now we have all this artificial lighting and lamps and overhead lighting that keeps our brains stimulated awake. Screens, we've talked about that for 90 some episodes about how looking at a screen before bed is not a good thing. I'm just as guilty. It's, it's, I, you know, I'm not uh, putting uh, holier than thou. I am just as guilty about doing that as well. The second thing, and this is going to you know, make a lot of people upset, can't have caffeine during the day, like caffeine at all, alcohol, anytime close to bed. The optimum time, I think, in in the book to have a drink mm-hmm. is like mid-morning because <laughs> that takes, you know, that all this could time be to, potentially bad. It could be depending on what type of job you have or what kind of person you are. But <laughs> your body takes a certain amount of time to process right. the alcohol through your system. And if you still have alcohol in the system for happy hour, it still has to process, and that's taken away from your body's able to shut down hmm. to get that sleep. And any kind of artificial assistance, such as sleeping pills or other depressants, hmm. if you will, uh, that will not help you get better sleep. An- another one that my wife will probably not uh, enjoy is to have a room with colder temperatures. Now, my I wife- I get on board with this. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of a-, a furnace. Uh, I kind of run hot uh, in a lot of ways. And I would love to have a cooler uh, bedroom. This may be uh, a point of contention for many people. Uh, you, you like a warm, snuggly environment with your down comforter and the quilt the grandma made for you to keep you nice and warm. Not going to help because your body needs to have that lower temperature in order to help get into that sleep pattern. Uh, and then the finally... Uh, is to stay on schedule as we make it through the work week where we get up at, say, 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, but we get up at 10 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. That's going to throw off. (laughs) Got caught it. (laughs) Um, It's going to throw off our normal circadian rhythm uh, routine. And the rest of you, the the other two people who are still listening to this, uh, are probably going to tune out now. But if you wake up at the same time on the weekends – your body is maintaining that routine. So no screens or bright light at night. Let your let candle in the in the bedroom or dim light can help your brain adjust. Or uh, we mentioned this several episodes back, getting a Wi-Fi connected bulb that has a different hue spectrum. That's right. You know, cutting out that blue light and getting more of that incandescent warm light back in your, your there you go. bedroom. Yep. Uh, what you intake, such as caffeine, alcohol, or sleeping pills or other types of depressants, the, temp- the external temperature of your environment and the routine. Those are four big factors to getting a better night's sleep. Now, we're going to be in good shape because we're approaching some time where it's going to get dark around 5 or 6 p.m., 
here in 49th parallel. Uh, yeah, 48, 49. 48, 49th parallel. It'll get darker sooner. Those of you listening who are down south towards the equator than us, you're going to have a later time. But uh, wake up routines, you know, that's the, the whole routine, wake up, go to sleep. That is what we all need to take a look at to combat the irritability, combat the restlessness or the multiple times we're waking up, not just to go to the bathroom. Oh, by the way, if you have those drinks uh, <laughs> as you approach bedtime, that might be a reason why you get up to go to the bathroom. Anyway, yeah. just saying. Uh, so that was what I, what I had found. And, and it's an effort. It's a, it's a disciplined effort. We're getting into a theme here, AJ. Yeah, um, I wonder. Yeah, about having to take control of yourself and to not just uh, do whatever impulses you impulsiveness you feel like. So you've awakened my mind, and with that said, you've also awakened the airwaves, because you might be listening to us on KMRE 102.3 FM. Fully conscious, low power. Community radio here in the head of... Uh, head, heart, oh, nah, that doesn't work. City of Subdued Excitement. That You're in Bellingham. Too. That works. I tried. That's all right. I'm going to dovetail into that. So leading up to going to sleep, you shouldn't be on your devices, which is something we have greatly writ large kind of adopted like you kind of wind down by thumbing through your social media and some of us are savvy enough to know that um, some of devices you can reduce blue light that's setting it in ios and android most android devices now Mm -hmm. but the other thing i want to point out is and and i'm not going to beat my normal doldrum i'm going to have a more happier tone with my social media comments when you look at your favorite feed uh chris you're on instagram not not a lot, but you you do surf it every so often. I, I do uh, check the feed, the algorithmic feed every yeah. now and then, yes. So bear, bear in mind, when you're on any social network, and I'm picking on Chris because he doesn't have very many social networks, but Instagram has done this new thing on the algorithm, which up until recently, there's been this this angst that we all go onto a social network and we were all a little bit peeved when algorithms started filtering things that were not friend related and it was more brand and that's how they made money see previous rants but it was interesting that instagram uh recently within the last two months have you noticed when you thumb through your feed there's now a new tile that will show up when you have gotten to the end of everything that is brand new Hmm. And it is, it's called You're All Caught Up. Interesting. This is something that has, in the geek world, we've seen this. It's called Infinite Scroll. It's, it's a web process where when you have content, it auto loads by before you get to the bottom of the page. You don't have to click next. Pagination. Pagination. And this has been a psychology that social networks have been abusing because this has been building into our angst you know we keep scrolling infinitely and it's kind of like the slot machine Mm -hmm. where oh this next one might be a hit and we get the same thing we keep scrolling going oh there might be something new i missed from chris and then that's how they feed us more ads so if you haven't noticed that one update your your instagram app but two keep that in the back of your mind when you're on your social networks if you feel like you're you're staying awake you're in bed and you feel like oh, wow, it's already 1030. Where has the time gone? That's probably the reason why is you're you've been buying into this whole slot machine mentality of infinite scroll. That's also going to be a a topic that we'll hit on when iOS 12 12 comes out, because we're going to have the ability to start disciplining our technology usage. You got it too. The other thing I wanted to throw out is kids. So I am a new parent and my child knows how to use the iPhone. Now, here's the thing. A lot of parents, and as a geek, I I hear this a lot. I like iOS, but I really wish there was toddler mode. And I kind of have to look at them. There there is. I know that there is. It's it's powering off your phone and not showing them (laughs) how to power it on. Thank you. Well played. Zing. Anyway, Uh, but let's move on. Well, no, I just wanted to point this out because more and more uh, talking with my wife and, Uh and her friends and her group, um, I had to point this out that if you do have an old iPad, this is, the, you know, you retire that old iPad first gen and you hand it to the, the little one in the back seat. Ever since iOS 6, we've had in uh, accessibility, there's guided access mode. And I put a link in the show notes if you don't know about Drink. this. For lack of better terms, you're hacking guided access mode for the intent and purpose of giving it uh, to somebody. So basically your device is a kiosk. They hit the home button. Does it, it doesn't work. You hit the lock button, doesn't work. They hit the volume button, doesn't work. Whatever the app is when you go into uh, guided access, which is once you have that feature enabled, you triple click the home button and 
it's locked. It's a kiosk until you put your fingerprint or your passcode that you make outside of your passcode for your device. So if your kiddo knows your PIN, you can make a different one for guided access. Yes. So I just wanted to throw that out. Link is in the show notes. Drink. Um, But also you can set a time limit that guided access is on, and then it will self-destruct and lock your device until you have it, and then you can unlock guided access. And that way you're not to blame for uh, when the time is up and the the device shuts down. Right. told you it was 30 minutes. Right. And it's not you, it's the device. Uh, And then the last thing I wanted to point out is, so instead of using social media to go to sleep to, and instead of listening to podcasts, because that does keep your, as much as you're probably listening to us uh, late at night, which Chris and I greatly appreciate. Stay tuned for a future podcast in which we will have our quiet insomnia episode to try to get, help you get to sleep. Uh, sorry. Anyway. <laughs> no, I have to wake up. Sorry. <laughs> what, uh, <clears throat> that silky smooth bass voice. That's so right. no, I, I wanted to throw out a different uh, option and it's another, uh, not that we're plugging Kevin Rose, but he's kind of dove into this, this area of like just remedial, get yourself healthier. And I'm using healthier in air quotes. So he has another app called Oak. And uh, it's called Oak Meditation. And basically it allows you to have guided breathing exercises to meditate. Not from any spiritual side. It's just helping you breathe, calm down, clear your mind. And it's a really it's a really useful app. I like it because you also have different sounds that you can fall asleep to. So it's kind of like that sleep noise generator type of thing. Or you can also use it with this guided meditation to help kind of find your breathing and thus slow down yourself and then drift to sleep. They actually have a guided meditation for falling asleep. I think we all can agree, uh, no matter what side of the aisle that you're on or what color state you live in or who who your favorite football team is, breathing is important. (laughs) And the more that we get a chance to be aware of our breathing, not from a spiritual standpoint, boys and girls, but actually from a conscious standpoint, all the better. And isn't it nice how there's someone out there with truckloads of available money in their portfolio that wants to invest in making the human experience better. Yeah. So that's why we're plugging Kevin yeah. Rose's stuff because he's doing something about it. Yeah. That's kind of helpful. And they're both free. Though both the apps are free. There's no in-app purchases. Like right. he just he's just throwing it out there. So And along the lines of uh, apps for iOS and Android users, if you're thinking about meditation uh, as a way to calm thyself down, uh, I bit the bullet and there's a there's an app you can download for freemium. You know, try they'll give you a few uh, meditation uh, experiences, uh, guided meditation uh, sessions, and then you can uh, sign up for a year or a month and such. It's called Headspace. Headspace is uh, and, and like Calm. Calm is another popular yeah, yeah, meditation yeah. app. And I did a, a, a like a three month uh, jaunt with that. I just enjoy a, the, a former monk. Uh, created this or or is a narrator for this app. And and bonus points if you like uh, non-American accents. (laughs) He's like from Australia. Oh, Australia. Yes, uh, and it's just a very comforting presence, and there, it's it's very non judgmental, cool. very amicable, just guiding you through things. And I often wonder, you know, as I'm meditating, I'm not hearing anything for a while. Oh, I'm supposed to concentrate on my breathing. Did my phone shut down, or did it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, but he'll come back on in a little bit. It's a really great app. Headspace. Drink. Got a link in the show notes uh, if you want to try something else on a more. Uh, 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 in-app purchase basis. Yeah. So to kind of put a bow on everything, so we, we're, we're kind of providing things to kind of find, kind of calm that inner voice. And we're kind of tailoring it towards sleep because I, I, I think you're right, Chris. Like we we run rampant five days a week of, you know, I mean, as a parent, like my, my sleep schedule has been borked for two years. Okay, and I have felt the decline of uh, of my my mental sharpness. It's I'm not as Johnny on the spot as fast as I used to be, and there's uh, it, it, it has to deal with sleep. You and know, I'll, I'll see your five day work week, and I'll raise you the two days on the weekend in which we get to do all of the family yeah. related things that have been the the duties that have been shirked right during the work day and in the evening when we're bombed off yeah. bombed out of our minds from the the stress of the work day. We don't. When is there a day of rest? Right. And so here's a way to reclaim some of that. Right. And I don't think like, to reclaim it. I think that the habit we've broken discipline of we we t- 
tend to go to this addictive thing that we have, which is, oh, let me just th- mindlessly thumb through Instagram, mindlessly thumb through Pinterest, mindlessly thumb through Facebook. And what we're trying to t- trying to provide is just an avenue of if you're going to do that, fine, but have a discipline of either limiting exposure or if you're trying to unwind, the last thing you should do is start doing some of those things of, of, of just mindlessly going through a social network and playing into that jackpot mentality. So we're hoping that this, this episode winds you down a little bit. And should you have any interest in uh, getting to that place of uh, a disciplined routine to sharpen up the, the, the self sharpened self. That's a great title for I a like book. This. Yeah. Right, we gotta I'm writing that. that down. Uh, there's a couple more apps we have in our show notes as far as habit building. Um, AJ's worked with uh, Streaks by Crunchy Bagel. I've worked with Productive, which is an app for iOS. Uh, they both, you know, you want to drink more water during the workday, touch a button yes. uh, as soon as you drink a, a thing of water. Uh, go take the garbage out. Uh, go for a walk after dinner. You touch these, you, you start to build up the the, the streaks of days uh, and the amount of time you've done stuff. This is a way to build habits into routines. Right. And, I, and I think that's the big thing is when we say uh, discipline has a bad connotation to it. You know, we usually say like, oh, you know, to discipline something or it, it can have to a lot of people. But if you want to boil it down, it, we're we're also trying to do this, this series as a way to bring light to bad habits yeah. and to help give tools for better ones. And I would I would say from my standpoint, discipline is something that I would equate with uh, our armed forces or our uh, uh, military. Sure. And military discipline, you know, I have high regard for what they go through and their very regimented mm-hmm. uh, existence uh, to, for routines and procedures and such. And that in some cases, that seems a little out of reach for me, mm-hmm. but it's not. Um Habits starting somewhere, creating yeah. a habit creates a routine, creates a system, and that system it all encompasses our discipline. I think we can do it, folks. Um, let us know if you are in or what or out or what you're having a tough time with any particular habit or vice or uh, lack of discipline. We're on hashtag BHAM podcast uh, g- or give us a call uh, 201 734 8324 and leave us a voicemail. Let us know how you're doing with what you are contending with in particular habits that you would like to improve. We'd love to talk about it with you. So to wrap up the show, do you have a recommendation uh, in podcast land or book land or app land that you want to uh, end the show with? Sure. Well, there, I mean, other than this podcast, which we're very thankful that Thank you're you. listening to, uh, there's a couple of podcast episodes that um, will talk about sleep and uh, mindfulness. One of them is a podcast called Sleep With Me. No, it's not what you think, Tinder generation. Um, <laughs> it's actually a podcast that will help you get to sleep as you are listening to it. It's, you know, even though we talk about not having screens or other right. stuff on during uh, bedtime, you can have a playing in the ambient air in your bedroom. Uh, it can help with that process. What, uh, anything you got? Uh, I just wanted to bring, kind of to, to wrap everything that we talked about, um, the Art of Manliness this last week put out an episode called The The Adventure of Silence. Oh, it's and, a lovely adventure. It's I love The Adventure of Silence. <laughs> Great and, title. And it was interesting because um, they had on the show, and I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he did like the three poles challenge where he actually spent 50 days walking across like Antarctica alone. And it was interesting because he wrote a book as well. I believe it's called The Art of Silence is the book. And it was just an interesting, it's a little bit, uh, the interview, uh, it's a Skype interview on the podcast. So, and he, the, the gentleman has a, an accent. So you might have to listen to the episode a few times. I found it a little bit hard. I had to rewind a few times. But it was interesting listening to his perspective of we live in an environment of noise and we have become accustomed to fearing silence a la when the lights go out chris and you may have a teen that doesn't know what to do (laughs) when there's no wi-fi or connectivity yes and that's a bad habit we develop and i just i listening to the interview i kind of internalized that um that fear that we have of silence lately and i don't know i just brought a, a, a different perspective so take a look at it on the art of manliness very good. That wraps up for this edition of the Bellingham Podcast. Thank you again so much for listening to us, rating us, reviewing us on anywhere you'd like to get your podcast. We're everywhere, pretty much. We got iHeartRadio. We got Chris's Spotify, favorite. Spotify, TuneIn Radio, and I, Google the, Podcasts, and of the course, Apple Podcasts. You name it, we're there. <laughs> and of course, Bellingham's good old Camry 102.3 FM. Low power. Community radio here in the heart of the city of subdued excitement. And on that under-caffeinated note... 
Take care of yourself, everyone. I'm AJ Barce. And I'm Chris Powell. Thanks once again for joining us on the Bellingham Podcast. 50 days all by yourself. 50 days. Well, I've, I'm, I'm over 50 days into my diet. But 50 days of solitude. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 